one more time. I, I really want you to get that in your spirit. The instruction you follow determines your future. That means the instruction that's given to you, and you already know that it ain't worth a quarter in the first place, here's the deal. And the moment you follow it, don't turn around and get mad about your future because the instruction that was given already told you what your future was going to be. It, it already sat there, and it already sat there, and, and she sat there and did it. Watch this. You turn around and you get with a person that's unsafe. And you follow that. Don't turn around and be surprised about your doggone future with that person. Don't get mad about it. Just know that's what I need. That's what I got when I got with the person. There ain't, no, there ain't no need to run into the church house after that everything else. Lord, help me. I don't know what's going on. And God's sitting there looking like he knew what that was when you got with it. If it was acting a fool when you got with it, why are you worrying about him acting a fool now? That's what you started following. Let, let, let me give it to you like this. I had a long conversation with the pastor. Been pastor a long time, been married a long time. And he calls me while I'm on the road. And he makes this thing. He says, I need to ask you a question. And before he asks the question, he just was just talking, telling me all his issues. <laughs> telling his issues with his church. going to ask you a question. I said, I need you to answer me back with a question. He said, okay. I said, no, you said that too fast and you already didn't understand what I'm saying. So I said like this, so do you know why I'm going to ask you a question and why I need you to answer me back with a question? He said, well, no. I said, okay, let's get business like this. Jesus would always go to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They would ask him a question, but he would always answer. I said, do you know why Jesus would answer the Pharisees with a question? He goes, well, no. All right, educated man. 35 years of this. I said, here's why. Answer a fool not according to his folly, or you will become just like him. I said, Jesus would answer the Pharisees with a question, and he would want them to understand what he was saying. Following me? So somebody is stupid to ask a question, I know I get to answer with a question. Because you're not going to waste the solution to the problem when you don't want it anyway. It's like taking a new bottle of water, opening it up, and pouring it on the ground because you really don't have no intention of drinking it. Guess what? I just keep the water in the refrigerator until I'm truly thirsty. Amen. You follow me? So finally he turns around and finally I so I tell him, you understand now? So then I ask him, do, do you want a solution to the problem? Or you just want another question? He said, I want a solution. So I said, so ask your question. He goes, well, what is my problem? And I sat there and I told him in uh, all the, he said, don't worry about now, y'all. He's just a little aggravated right now. He's been like that for about a week. And I explained that to all of us. And I'll use that here in just a minute, too. So I told him, I says, for 35 years, you have allowed your wife to do things. Now, 35 years later, you want to do something about it. Mm. Now, that's not the problem that he wants to correct the problem. The problem is the fact that he thinks he's supposed to change immediately when he says it. Mm. He's not looking at what he's allowed her to do for 35 years. Mm. So I had to give him this scenario. I said, take this example of being a farmer, and you 
have planted that same seed on 3,500 acres. I said, that's a whole lot to harvest. I said, and that's all you've been used to eating. Now you turn around and you come to your wife and you say, we're not going to eat that no more. Mm -hmm. But when she looks out at this acreage, she sees control. And she sees you prowling. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. And you're trying to figure out why won't she listen to me. I said, you're missing it. You're getting mad at her. You have 3,500 acres of control and unsolicitedness. Mm -hmm. Control, you plan it for her. Submissiveness, you plan it for yourself. So the minute you don't want to eat the food, she gets mad because you've been eating it for 35 years. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So I sat there and explained to him. He says, what do I do? I said, you need to plow the field. But know this. Understand in the aspect of plowing the field, you don't plow the field all to dirt at one time. All right. Because if you plow the field all the dirt at one time, she really don't act the fool because now nobody has nothing to eat at all. Am I making sense? I said, so what you have to do is you have to take one acre at a time, plow that acre under, plant that acre because the crop doesn't grow overnight. Here's the, here's the, here's, here, here's the oxymoron. Here's the bad part of that. While you're waiting for the new harvest to come in, you still have to keep eating this to survive until you're able to change your diet. Do you know that's what some of us are going through right now? We we didn't plow some fields and we're struggling with some things because we really want to change our diet, but the new stuff hasn't come up yet. And as that acre comes up, then you plow another one. All right. And eventually, you begin to replace all of that with the new harvest. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if I have an issue in the church, you don't turn around and pluck everybody out. You, you start with one, one acre at a time. In other words, what that means? One person at a time. One at a time. Because guess what? The way the harvest got there, it got started there was one seed at a time. You started getting rid of the seed, it started producing the weeds. When you stop planting that seed, it just stopped producing seeds. You follow? We're going somewhere in a minute. Yeah. Now I'm denying. Explain the harvest you have as a child that's blind. He's in the stage because he cannot see the way we see, but he sees. Because his speech is not like our speech. He gets aggravated. something's wrong with it, Amen. when something's not wrong with it, Amen. when he's being mischievous, Amen. and when he's doing his best to convey something to you that he doesn't have the speech for, Amen. and you got to pay attention to his emotions, Amen. to what he touches, Amen. to what he feels, Amen. how he grabs, and the pictures that come out of his mouth to know whether something is 
wrong with him until he reaches the age to be able to tell her what's wrong. Amen. To know when to spank him, when not to spank him. Amen. Or how many times we as parents make that mistake. Amen. Amen. We don't take the time. That's just how my mama did. Don't care how she did it. It ain't what the Bible says. It's just to train. Amen. I told my son, you wouldn't want me to do you like my dad did me. You think it was abuse. He said something one time. And if you didn't do it, it was not good. I would say in my mind, good Lord, this man going to kill me. For him, that was normal. You know why that was normal? Because that's what his dad did to him. You know why most men cheat on their wives? Because that's what their dad did to their mom. You know why most men feel like, man, I'm the man of the house, this is what I'm going to do, because that's what they dad did. You know why most men think the way they think? Because that's how they dad thought. Amen. I'm just setting this up, and we're going to talk about a husband and a wife today. Some of you ain't made that like it. You know what? You wonder why most folks don't like to come here? And we've had folks come and go. If I gave you the roster and the roll, there's over a thousand folks that's come through here. More than half of them said to said the reason why they couldn't stay, most of them were men, said because they couldn't change who they were. I can understand the woman's standpoint of view. So I hear you, Pastor, but you want me to put my life in the hands of a man that still wants to do whatever he wants to do and really don't want to love me like Christ loved the church. Amen. So guess what it does for the woman? It keeps her completely out of order. Amen. Not because she wants to be out of order, but because the man don't want to set God's order. But I said God's order. Yes, so the moment the man gets out of God's order, it puts everything Amen. out of order. Amen. And when it comes down to God dealing with it, he's going to tell that alpha male, you need to stand here. Just like he did with Adam. This is your fault. Amen. Here's the last thing I told this pastor. I said, go back to Genesis. I said, and look at what God did to Adam when he allowed Eve to replant. Mm -hmm. He kicked him out of the garden. Mm -hmm. Then he sat there and told him, now you will work by the sweat of your brow. Because here's what he told him. It'll take you the rest of your life to fix this problem. I know. Mm -hmm. Because this is what God said. I had already planted the garden. And the earth is mine. And the fullness thereof. And you turned around and stepped into it and planted something different. So you got a whole lot of work to do to put the garden back the way that it was. Okay, did y'all just get that? 
God says, I didn't mess it up, you did. Yeah. So you're going to put it back. Yeah. He goes, and that's what I'm going to do, Adam. I'm going to con con continue to keep reproducing you so you can keep working to put it back the way that it was. Okay, follow me. You know, don't sit there and think you something new. We're just a reproduction then of Adam to put back what he messed up. Right. And in the process of that, we developed his attitude at times. Uh -huh. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 22 says, hope you got your dictionaries too. Start in verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Please listen to me real good. And I love this one too. And you just got your opinions. Man, let me help you with something today. Please get rid of the macho image and the dogmatic ways of thinking because the way you see it is that's how it's supposed to be. When really this is what men, this is what we do as men. When we see something that comes to correct us, and we know that we're wrong, the macho part flares up because I don't want to be corrected. So rather than admit that I need to change what I'm doing, I come up with an excuse to say why I'm not going to change. I can prove that one in Genesis too. Because the moment God turned around and went to talk to Adam, he pointed the finger, he started to blame Watch the first person he blamed was God. The woman thou gave me. The, the woman thou gave me. She. And then she gave to me. And God said, what does he got to do with what you did? I didn't give the instructions to you. I created you first. I talked to you first. I told you first. You were the one lonely. You were the one that needed help. So therefore, I created you help. Not just any kind of help. But I took her from your rib. So she would think like you. Act like you. Be like you. So you'd be on one accord. Yeah. And you let her just go waltz off. You knew who the devil was. She didn't. And you stood there and watched. Because you heard him say you would be like God. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine God sitting there talking to Adam and says, but I already created you in my image. You were already like me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you go back and read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Lucifer says, you'll be like God. And God says, I created you in my, you were already like me. Amen. You already functioned like me. Amen. You already spoke things into existence like me. Amen. You already lived in the spirit realm like me. Amen. You did everything like me. And you fell for that stupid line? Because you understood good. But the moment you hear you heard him say a word you never heard before, you got killed. Well, what is evil? You be like God knowing good and God said, if I want you to know what evil was, I, I'd have told you. Yeah. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Here's what that's saying. As long as I get what I want, I'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. As long as I can live the way that I want, I'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. As long as everything does it the way I say do it, I'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. As long as that woman is doing what is pleasing to me, I'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me make sure I clarify that. Not her doing what's pleasing to God. As long as it pleases me. Mm -hmm. And if I happen to be in that area with God, then I'll be pleased. Yeah. But if I don't want to serve God on that day, and she's serving God on that day, chances are he's not going to be pleased. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Let, 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 let me read it. Let me read that again. Uh, let, let me give you an amplified version. Yes, sir. A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruits of his mouth and with the consequences of his words, he must be satisfied whether good or evil. Yes, sir. The consequences of his satisfied till the consequences come. Mm -hmm. He's satisfied, Miss Yolanda, until the consequences come. standard of his living is according to his own moral. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I have been in the body shop business all of my life. I've been working on cars. I've seen engines blow up. I've seen 18 wheelers <laughs> throw a piston out the side of the block and a hole and throw it 300 yards. I've seen sprockets hit men in their head in the middle of the shop and kill them. I've seen vehicles blow up. And burn if I, and, and if I had to run. I've seen them driving down the road and watching engine lock up, everything else lock up, vehicles flip whole nine yards. But I saw vehicles burnt to the ground yesterday. 
in a way I, I never knew a fire could do to a piece of metal. However, I ain't never seen engines melted. A melted motor. Melted. I never knew, we read it in the Bible, when it says you come out like pure gold. You go through the fire, you come out like pure gold. Yes, this is no joke. Hallelujah. For metal to be silver Jesus. and the fire to be so hot, God yes. is my witness. The color of the texture was solid gold yes. from the fire, burning it to yes. nothing. The, the color turned to gold. Whatever the car used to be, what what metal was fire resistant was gold. Gold. My line, Chris. And everything that the person was worried about that was in a car burnt to nothing. I'm talking about even paperwork. But the number one thing this person needed was a set of keys. And how do you dig through nothing? And the paperwork and the keys in the area of stuff burned up come out untouched. What everybody's saying, there ain't nothing to dig out the rubble. Mm -hmm. But I got some papers and some keys I gotta have. Oh, yeah. And you gotta start digging through this stuff and pull them out with no ash. God said everything else she needed in that car, she did not need. Amen. But she needed the papers that gave her identification uh -huh. and the keys to get in the door. Yeah. <sighs> You're turning around being concerned about all of this stuff that you have and God says, I'm going to burn off everything you think you need and the only thing you need is your identity and my keys. That's why when you leave and you get to heaven and you die, the only thing he wants you to do to identify you a child and the way that you lived your life is the keys to get in. Yeah. The kind of car you drove don't matter. The kind of house that you have don't matter. The kind of status you had don't matter. But do you identify with him? He takes you through things for you to find out your identity and to receive your keys. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Let, let, let me give you, give you this. And then everything that you're connected to, if you're doing what's right. This, this person had one. Other thing she was worried about. She was almost content with her identity in the keys. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't content when she thought there was about 4,000 other people's identity burn up. 
because they, those people, identity that she needed, would only be identified with her. The benefits they received, they could only receive them through her. These people's lives are hanging in the balance through her. And their identity was in her hands. So after we drug out the rubbish and you have this big pile of stuff. We share in Christmas and we start cleaning stuff hanging and we start cleaning. Till we got all the way and there's this whole burn up section mashed up against what used to be a wall. Then they're sharing them, pulled the stuff out and broke the box open. That looking at what used to be a box that is no longer a box, what's contained inside the box is not harm. Yeah. Two things saved what was in the boxes. The first thing is the woman was smart enough to put it in a seal. But the seal was plastic, so plastic does melt. <laughs> and the second thing that covered the seal they were drenched in water. Oh, wow. oh, my God. So because they were sealed in plastic and got covered in water from the resistance of the heat, it caused it, Yolanda, what do we normally do with papers we want to seal? You put them through that little machine that you had? It just laminated them. <laughs> Clear as a whistle, though, just laminated paper. In every box we pulled out that was burned up, everything in there was wet and laminated. You might want to make sure, first of all, you're covered in the blood. Amen. And then the second thing, make sure before you get covered in the blood, you get washed in it. say he was the reason why she didn't get burned up in the fire oh, wow. and had the house burning on videotape on his camera. Oh, wow. And soliciting that his school would clean and do the work for free. But did you have any There's some sorry men in this world. Yes, there is. Amen. 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 
what do you have of value in the house? Is it still in there or is it out? Even using the word of God. And almost had her convinced that she said, ah, Daryl, God sent man. And I just get to and I say, no, the hell he ain't. It's one thing to assume that is the only house she has. But what those men didn't know that four years ago her other house had burnt to the ground. And less than a week before that fire the new house had just got completed being rebuilt. And from that house burning down, she prospered from it burning down. What they didn't understand, he's getting ready to bless her again. Because the other house were putting new stuff in. And now this house got stuff in it that's from an old relationship, an old marriage. old heartbreaks, old confusion, memories she just kept living with that God said, I got to burn up your past to send you to your future. He had to burn it up. The other house had nothing and she had to put everything in and all you need. We're helping put new stuff. And I'm looking at it. He don't want you to have this stuff. You've been holding on to it for 25 years. Burn it up. Your vehicle was a reminder. Burn it up. The stuff that did get burned up, it was old. He didn't want her to have it. Don't get mad, men. But what you speak out of your mouth. If you think you got it worked out. And if it ain't in the will of God, don't get mad about the consequences. Let me help you with something. It don't matter if people don't think it works in your favor. Just as long as you know it's in the will of God. That's right. Amen. 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 So I learned to give up my will a long time ago. Now here's the deal here. You don't know the will of God. You just got to walk in and he shows you his will. Amen. If you walk in his will, he'll show you Amen. his will for your life. Amen. But you got to walk in in it, not try to figure it out before yeah. you start walking. Yeah. Yeah. A man's moral. Self. His self. Self-centered. Shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth. Everything for he's going to get it. He's going to get it in return. All of it. He want to be rich, he'll get rich. But he won't be rich in the spirit of God. Amen. And with the consequences of his words, watch this. All you gotta do is open his mouth and say something. Mm -hmm. The words that he said. 
This wouldn't say. Uh-huh. Let me help you with something. People take this old so for granted. Really. When it comes down to dealing with the word of God, you really need to be careful about your comments about it. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it's better to say you don't understand it. Yeah. All right. And to get it understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about me. Let me just use me now. I don't want nobody to think I'm picking on. Uh -huh. Now, if it's walking down your, your step, then get it, get it together. But I'm talking about me. Oh, how ignorant I was to have a comment to make real quick about something because of my logic. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God just says, one of these days, you little black man, Amen. I'm going to have you in a place. So what you got to do for me, you're going to get to study it one day. And you're going to realize how dumb you really were. Amen. 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 And then you're going to understand some of the things that happened in your life and some things you shouldn't have spoken against me. Amen. I did some things to help you, but because you didn't want to be taught. Mm -hmm. You brought some things on yourself because yes. of the words out of your mouth. Amen. Jamari sat there and called me. This is going to be a good story. Glad at least I got one good one to tell. He said, I just want you to come. I want to see you play for. You ain't living right. He says, come see me play. I said, I got to go out of town. So I asked him, what time are you playing? I need to be somewhere by 11 or 12 o'clock at night. It starts at 7. And I'll come for one hour. My mind was already made up that I didn't care about what I was going to hear. You'll get like that when you get bitter with somebody. Yeah, yeah amen, anyhow. Amen. Right. Some of you can act like you ain't bitter with some stuff. Amen. But I thank God for being saved when it makes you override that. Amen. So quite naturally, typical Jamar, give me a time and heck, it don't start when he says. The devil tried to use that. You see that? You're going to be late going where you're going. Yeah. He doing this same old, same old. He knew it wasn't going to start on time. So now I'm already pissed off. Here he goes again. Tony approached me. How you doing, Pops? I'm already halfway flat up. I'm ready to hit him in his mouth. He knew that, had on a warm-up. He said, say, hey, man, he knows that. What you got the warm-up song for? Yeah. God fixed it where there was another preacher that knew me. Hey, Pastor Hodges, I just had to shift my attitude because I was pissed. Started talking. He had enough, so he knew then, yeah, he was upset. So he walks off and he goes. And I'm looking at this place, try pointing, God started saying, he says, you. he said, this ministry here ain't but two years old. 
got no more members. You got everybody straight. And God says they have a gym. They have an adolescent center. Maybe. He says they have a, a teen rescue program. He says they're in a $15 million facility with the same amount of folks that you have. And God says, I want you to sit down. See, a bunch of young pastors, the oldest was about 24. Mm -hmm. Pull out, young pastor pulls out a wad of money. He says, this money's not going home with me. So I'm sitting there saying to myself, so now you're going to try to buy people. Said to my brain, going. He goes, I want you young folks to have this money. He says, it's a stack of a lot of money in $20 increments. And God says, he's going to prove to you. Because 20 means either holy or unholy. God said he's using that to pull out what wants to be saved and what doesn't want to be saved. Mm -hmm. And he said, before we get started, who wants to come up here and get this money? But tell me, why are you so angry? Give me four people. Folks are sitting there first. I'm like, God, dog, they don't even want the money. I thought to say, shoot, I need that money. I testify. I make up something. Nobody else wants the money. God says, sit here and watch. We still going somewhere. We got time. Finally, a seven-year-old boy gets up, and he walks up there. I wish I had got that part. I was so jacked up, I started recording late. I know how to use my phone. <laughs> and the little bitty boy grabs the mic. Tears roll down. Remember, I remember his name. He said, my name is Jesse. Seven years old. And I'm an alcoholic. And I can't stop drinking. He had my attention. He says, and I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight because I need Jesus to deliver me from alcohol. I'm like, okay, that was enough right there for me. I'm thinking, okay, can't nothing get no worse than that. Seven. 13-year-old girl stands next to me. She says, I'm a heroin addict. 
She says, I've been a heroin addict since I was eight. She said, that you, know, you have no clue how easy it is to get it. She said, but being a heroin addict, I've been raped more times than you can count. I've been molested and I have been beaten. She says, I'm here tonight. She said, because since I found Jesus, I'm free from all of that. She said, but I have one issue. I don't know how to forgive the people that did that to me. So I'm here tonight so I can forgive. A 10-year-old stands up. His hair is all kind of different colors. The average person would turn around in judgment and say he was gay. He was. That wasn't the focus. He says, my daddy never wanted me. And my stepmom beat me. And my uncles molested me. He says, so I don't know who I am. But I'm here tonight so Jesus can give me my identity. I'm actually giving you the watered down version. He says, I don't want to be like me. In that place, even all the young folks sitting there. One guy, I mean, one girl turns around and says, I'm going to sit there, I'm going to say this. She said, and my father's sitting right there, and she starts crying. I said, she's going to watch this one. She said, um, I hated him because of the way that he lived, the abuse he did to us in the house. Here's what she said. She says, but he changed. She said, but my problem is I don't know how to accept him being changed. She says, because even though he's different, nobody will recognize he's not the same man. Mm -hmm. So she's struggling with forgiving her father being saved because nobody else will forgive him. Seven, 13, 14 years old. Then met kids that said they came out of a good home, had good parents, been in church all their life, and chose to run with the world. Mm -hmm. And got so wrapped up and they were standing there asking how to get out. Because we make it by choice. Mm -hmm. And the preacher turned around and said, he said, I'm dealing with this right now. He said, I probably don't need to say this. And he looked at his wife and said, do you mind? He's 24 years old. He said, I got to do this. By this time, everyone else broke down, so he got to tell the truth, too. He said, I got a wife sitting right there that's just trying to, that just trying to commit suicide. I'm the church boy. She wants to kill herself. Mm -hmm. He looked, he said, Mom, I'm sorry. He said, my sister wants to kill herself. Mm -hmm. We go to church. Mm -hmm. He said, Mom, I'm really sorry about what I'm going to say. He said, and I'm struggling with forgiveness. He said, because my grandmother died. He said, then we go. And the only sister I know is the one sitting in front of me. Mm -hmm. 
if we get to the funeral and they introduce two brothers and sisters that are my age, he says, and I'm struggling with forgiveness for my father, which is a preacher that never told us he had two other kids somewhere else. And I'm here in this plane by this time. And the atmosphere starts changing. And when the plane starts, the atmosphere shifts. It shifts to man talking. Next thing I know, folks are on their knees. I didn't got on my knees on the floor praying. And they go into worship. When I start seeing worship, I'm walking out the door. And I'm listening to the worship and I'm leaving. And I say, wow. So that's one heck of a musician that worship leader. And when I turn around to look back, is Jamari playing? And I just said, Lord, I might not agree. Because I see these young boys need some mentoring. But I see where their heart is. And let us older preachers be a younger preachers Amen. because their hearts are in the right place. Amen. I said, if my own son won't listen to me, Amen. help him listen to somebody. Amen. I see what you want to do for him. I need him to let you do it for him. To have a gifting like that. Amen. With an attitude so bad. Amen. And God said, those are the ones the devil wants. Makes you turn around. And when you see what I saw, it ain't about none of us. Mm -hmm. It ain't about the words that come out of our mouth. I don't want the consequences of that. Mm -hmm. Forget about it, don't say, baby, you dying. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Dying. Amen. You want to know why? Because older folks want things our way. Amen. Amen. When really it's all about is telling them about Christ. Amen. Being an example for them. But you know what? Young men can't look up to older men no more. Mm -hmm. It's what they teach them is the opposite of what a man really is. Amen. Instead of telling them to be respectful, they're telling them how to talk to a woman. Amen. How to get you. Get your player play on. Amen. Let's just keep going here. His words, he must be satisfied, whether good or bad. So God says, whether it's good or bad, be satisfied with it. You spoke it. Amen. So even if it's bad, you ought to be happy about it. Amen. In other words, he's saying take responsibility yeah. for what you've done. And since that's what you wanted, you ought to be happy about it. Yeah. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. What you say out of your mouth will either give you life or you will destroy your own self. Amen. Just from what you say. Because 
what you speak, it already goes into your future. If you say, if I say I hate me, and then I say I didn't mean that mean, here's what's got a problem going to be. You really get this. Because I spoke that first. Me and you are about to go through a transition briefly of me hating you before I come back and say I didn't mean it. Because I spoke it, we're going to go through the transition of me hating her. And then me going through conviction to say I didn't mean that. And the only reason why we went through that is because I said it. God said you said it, that's in your future. So something will happen between you and Nene that's going to bring about hatred briefly. Then you have to go back and sit there and tell her, but I didn't mean that, but you didn't cause all this damage right here. Amen. Being loose with your mouth. Amen. Thinking what you said don't mean nothing. Amen. I'm telling you what I know. Every time, I, I, at least once a week, I sit there and I say something a few times, and I'm like, oh, man, before the week's out, of work, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm working on that. And I have that experience because I open my mouth. I don't blame nobody for it. I understand it. Sometimes like, oh, I should not have said that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I got to take this walk. Mm -hmm. I don't try to make up no excuse for it. Well, you know, it don't matter. Try to make up excuse for it. Don't change. You still spoke into your future. You're still going to go through it, period. Yeah. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. For death I like. Mm -hmm. Now here's the deal, you got some folks. They indulge in it. They like talking like that. Uh -huh. They like living like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They like giving their opinion. And God said, you're going to live an opinionated life. Mm -hmm. So here's other words like this. See, I'm going to have folks that they like to give an opinion whether they are like you or not. Mm -hmm. whether they're going to do for you or not. Mm -hmm. This is going to be based off their opinion. Which brings me to the scripture I want to get to. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good Amplifier says it like this. He who finds a true wife. Mm -hmm. You can look for a wife. Don't mean she going to be a true wife. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you, you can think you want that. Get what you think and what you Thank you, woman. It's not what you were supposed to have. Amen. Amen. Yes, mm -hmm. I looked at a woman yesterday that thought she wanted this man she married. Mm -hmm. Got money. Got nice house. Got nice cars. But after being married to him, she found out he ain't got no brains. Amen. And that he is all about himself. Amen. And has a violent streak in him. Amen. Now she should have thought about that the first time the Negro threw her out of his truck going down the road. She should have thought about marrying him the first time he choked her. I told you I got some members of Houston. I dealt with some stuff. And to turn around and still marry the man. And think he ain't going to get no worse.
and ride the vehicle with me and stop at the store and he getting his drink on and drunk while we driving. I say, Lord, keep me near the cross. Mm -hmm. Just let me get back where I need to get to safety. Drinking and try to talk about the word of God with me. Drinking. Mm -hmm. Good looking man. Some of them are like, boy, he sure got, when he opened his mouth, you find out how ugly he is. Mm. When he opens his mouth. And you're going to say, is anybody home upstairs? Okay, let me work with you with this. Y'all know where I'm going with this. Who so First thing is the who. Y'all with me? The first thing is the who. But you can't just look at the who and think that's all there is to it. First of all, the who has to give the identity of the man. The who gives identity whether he saved or not. Amen. 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 <laughs> Remember, we're, we're in the word. We ain't talking about uh, getting a woman or a husband according to the world. We're talking about according Amen. to Amen. the Bible. Amen. Amen. So, so the first thing that the man has to do to know what kind of wife he's going to look for, Amen. he first has to identify who he is. Amen. The man first, to know what he's going to look for, has to identify with who he is in Christ. He has to know his relationship with God. He has to know that the Lord is his shepherd. He has to know that the Lord is his all in all. He has to know that the Lord is his bridge over troubled waters. He has to know that the Lord is his shelter in the time of storm. He has to know that the Lord is there for him in his midnight hours. He has to know his relationship with God first. He has to be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit right. first. Amen. He has to be blood bought, born again first. Amen. He has to first have a new heart created in him. The right spirit renewed in him. Have to tell the Lord to wash him from the head to toe first. He has to identify. He first, his relationship has to be, I trust in the Lord with all my heart, Amen. all my soul. Yeah. And I lean not to my own understanding first. Amen. How will you sit there and know that? Because it says, who so? That word so means the reason for the results. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in other words, you know where I'm at with the Lord according to the results of my spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Not according to my financial growth. Yeah. <laughs> Not according to my physical growth. Yeah. But according to my spiritual growth, you know the results of my relationship with Christ. Right. Yeah. You know the results of my relationship in my walk. You know the results of my relationship in my talk. Yeah. You know the results of my relationship what I do for the children of God. Amen. You know the results of my relationship with Christ, what I do with the stuff God blesses me with. Amen. Amen. I said, y'all been real quiet. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Say, why does man mess with my stuff? Mm -hmm. Let me help you. It ain't your stuff. Yeah. It's God's stuff. Yeah. He let you use his stuff Amen. to give his stuff to somebody else. Amen. He just let you use his stuff. Yeah. It ain't your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That money ain't yours. It's his money. Uh -huh. He just let you use that money to purchase his stuff. For you to tell folks you got stuff. Yeah. To be able to give people stuff. Because uh -huh. God blessed you with stuff. Amen. But he really wants you to do something with his word. Amen. And it makes the stuff turn to things. Amen. He gives you stuff. But the word ought to make them things. Uh -huh. And things usually are tools that make things useful right. for the purpose of the kingdom of God. Yeah. It shouldn't say stuff. Say stuff. It ought to turn into things. Amen. It's only stuff when you keep it to yourself. It's things when you bless somebody. Amen. Okay, let me prove that. You know how you say, you know how you tell folks that, I had this stuff at the house. And I figured you could use these things. Y'all right, do That's not right. say that. Right. I was looking at this whole stuff at the house. And the Lord placed on my spirit, you could use these things. Right. It goes from stuff when you bless somebody and be turned into things. have to identify and the way you identify watch this it's by the reason of your results mm -hmm. okay, we're not done there yet there's still so much in this who now the who turns into the how mm -hmm. now after you have identified who you are mm -hmm. then you are know how are you going to go about finding your wife? <laughs> Ain't that right, no brother? Amen. Well, you didn't believe she was back there? That's why I called her name. So you see she is. She ain't no better alone. She can't get the word. Don't do what Miss Dorothy just did. You hear the name of let me see it. They here. <laughs> we are family. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all don't understand. Pardon me. You don't like this. Mr. Lama, you really don't like this. I show wish Reverend I show me Deacon I show here that he would show up. Why would Deacon in the room? There's this wooden box burnt up. Don't know what's in the wood burn up box yet, so I start pulling in the wood box. And the first thing I got pulled out is a Diana Ross cassette still sealed never open. I start getting a little excited about that. I said, well, I'm really not a Diana Ross, but if Diana Ross, let me see what else didn't get burned up. And I turned around and pulled out another crispy tape. And I saw Luther Vandross. Oh, it shouldn't have messed with me with Luther now. You should not have messed with me with Luther. You shouldn't have messed with me with Luther, boy. I, I almost cut a rug. No, they shouldn't have messed with me with Luther now. 
it, 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 got, it got time to leave. I think Christian little man said, I don't know what's going to happen to this man. Now, and they laughed and they said, their cassettes, he can't play them no way. Oh, how little do they know about me? Oh, no, no, they don't know nothing about my car. They don't know the car. Oh, they don't know the automobile God gave me. Oh, you don't, uh, y'all don't understand. Uh, but there, I guess, how you go play that cassette? It probably ain't going to play. What I told him, man, I said, what, wipe it off. Wipe it off. Blow it. Turned around, kicked on the AC, put it on high. Cocked the seat back just a little bit. Hit the highway and they heard Gene Gene. They said, You got a cassette in here? Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yeah. Turn the corner. You know, this thing was old, old church clothes. The bass starts, kick, starts kicking in. I said, Oh, man. I said, I said, I said Lord, but there's something for me to find you. Something you gotta say to me. Well, here's in the cassette. Can't do it like the CDs. I couldn't switch. You know, it's a little burnt up now, so I can't read the titles. But here's the deal. While we driving, Christian saying, So I like that, Jeff. Oh, you like Luther. But while we driving, yes, we know starts. And Luther says, A chair. I want y'all, you will get this. See, y'all don't know how to hear the law. He said, this chair, even if somebody ain't sitting in it, it's still a chair. Yes, it is. Come on now. In a house, ain't a house until somebody's in it to make it a home. God said to me, that body of yours is just a house. But until you let me in, it won't be a home. You'll just be a shell walking. He said a room it's just a room. But the room inside the house is not a home unless something occupies it. Are you with me so far? Some of you got a house. You got a bunch of rooms in your life. But Christ ain't occupying your life so you don't have a home. Just a house. I had to start crying. I said, look at your prophetic self before you die. I told the cat, said, that's when folks really sung some Amen. stuff on their heart Amen. about Amen. real life. Amen. Amen. But like this, they proved it. Before I went there, the music so clean, Christian was, Christian was singing. He said, I don't know why I like that song. Because it's clean. It's Luke. It's, speak, it's speaking to you. He was talking about love. It's something he needs to identify with. Made you feel good, didn't it? Because Luther was talking about what it takes to be loved by somebody. A relationship and a relationship and love don't let down. Amen. This might be the church house, but it ain't your church home unless love alive. Amen. 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 You know what? You know what folks say they're looking for a church home? They're looking for somewhere to be loved. Amen. 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 What makes the chairs different is what occupies the chair. Amen. person act the fool in the chair ain't the chair's fault. Amen. It's what's sitting in the chair. Amen. Who's 
so fine as the what? It's the how. It's the how. I talk to my niece about it all the time. I long talked to my daughter this morning. About what kind of man she needs in her life. She cannot identify with Christ. The only way you can identify the bride is by you first being identified right. with Christ. Amen. The way a woman can identify husband is when she identifies with Christ. Amen. Because when she identifies with Christ and he identifies with Christ then she won't see him she'll see Christ. Amen. Amen. If the man turns around and he identifies with Christ and that woman identifies with Christ he won't see that woman he'll see the bride, the church. Amen. 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 The reason why we hurt each other in relationships is because we see each other as people. Amen. We don't see the bride and the bridegroom. Amen. Amen. We don't see the church as God coming back to get a church without spot or wrinkles. So therefore, we don't iron out the wrinkles in our relationships. Amen. 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 Findeth a wife. First thing, let me help you with something, men and women. God says many are called. Many are called. Y'all talk to a lot of people in the course of a week. Y'all put Christ out there to serve your friends and have talked to some to your blue in the face. Many are called. Are you with me? You put the call in to their line. They just not answer it. Many are called to watch what happens. Thank you. Few are chosen. What are you saying? Those that you call that never answer, but those that answer are those that you have to choose to minister to. Mm -hmm. You can't minister to those that you call. You can only minister to those that answer because those become chosen. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. What do you mean that few are, only a few are chosen, many are called, few are chosen because here's what happens. You only can identify them because they know who the son uh -huh. is. Amen. 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 Do you remember when we started out with whoso ever find of a wife? Uh -huh. Watch what happens in the sun. Here's that word so. The reason for the result. Uh -huh. How can you choose them? The results that is produced in the way they talk, Amen. the way they walk with you. Amen. Really, y'all, I'm really giving you some profile stuff. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Without me getting all excited, I'd like to get excited and scream and all that stuff. You don't understand. My leg working pretty good today. I Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Findeth a wife. So, guess what else you find a wife? Let me help you with this, man. Uh, another thing in the deal is 
you have the word we so it lets you know you can't do it by yourself. Yeah. Whoever and the man finds that wife, he says, we. Mm-hmm. Who's gonna buy that house? We are. Mm-hmm. Who's gonna buy that car? We are. Mm-hmm. Who's gonna bless those folks? We are. Mm-hmm. What are we gonna do for the church? We gonna we. do it. Mm-hmm. What about our tithes and offers? We, we. gonna pay them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We. 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 And we. And we. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Don't be like the three little pigs. We, we, we. All the way home. But you know how it becomes the we? It all falls in line of what you do with the if. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Because in that if, you cannot mistake the if for the I. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because if stands for choice. You have to say yes or no. Amen. Y'all with me? Find, find the wife. Find a wife. So what kind of wife Tony, would a man be looking for? He'd have to be looking for the kind of woman that identified with Christ just like he does. That goes after Christ just like he does. Mm -hmm. Loves the Lord as much as he does. Mm -hmm. Wants to please God as much as you do. And he don't want nothing in his life that's not headed the same direction with Christ that he is. Because she's supposed to be there to help him achieve the goal of Christ, not hinder it. And he's supposed to be able to to protect her on the journey, not get her destroyed. Because if he can't protect her, she can't help him. And if she can't help him, then when she becomes destroyed, he becomes destroyed. You know why he becomes destroyed? Not because he don't have a wife, he don't have no help. Now most men would sit there and hate my guts. And all the time they disagree with that. Mm-hmm. And it's right there. Right. Yeah. Amen. They don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. They want to do the man thing they way. Amen. Not God's way. Amen. We want to do God on a part time mm-hmm. basis. Amen. When it's Tell you, I, I, I used to I used to be that person. Mm-hmm. It don't work. Mm-hmm. Not being a man, it don't. Uh-huh. Now when you start understanding the accountability God holds a man. Mm-hmm. Make you want to get your crap together real quick. Mm-hmm. Because he gives you no excuses. Mm-hmm. He expects a man to be what he designed him to be. Here, Joe was talking about, well, you know, that pastor sleeping there by the church full of women. Here, was full of women because you ain't there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> full of women because all, you, all your buddies, y'all in the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, f- it's, 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 f- it's, f- it's full of women because you with some of their husbands at football night at your house drinking beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you don't want the pastor, Noticing what you got, well, well, here's the deal. 
you didn't put this man in a position where he think he in a candy factory. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you, you know what y'all think it don't roll like that? Yes, it does. I've seen him go as far as as bold as sit there and stand up and sit there and say, don't get mad at me because your wife come to me. I was like, wow. I'm telling you, I'm saying, well, this dude going to get his head beat in that church. But what he, he was actually saying as well to them, I don't want to deal with her like that. That's what she, you for. Mm -hmm. Because I really can't help her because you won't let me help you. Yeah. So really, the time I'm spending helping your wife, I can't help her because she go right back home to a hard-headed man. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if you got a wife, you can't separate the two because you're one. So it's actually pointless to talk to one and not the other. Because if you're talking to the tail, not the head, how do you yeah. get to the brain? I don't want to talk to the back side of the body. I need to talk to the front of it. Well, how do I do that? I got all these problems. And just make Christ the head. Then yeah. I can talk to God. God talk to you. Yeah. That's it right there. Amen. You ain't. But I ain't got no man. Yeah, you ought to be walking hand in hand with Jesus Christ. Amen. That ought to be your man. Amen. That ought to be your man. And, get, and, and guess what he's going to do when a man approaches Christ? Go stand there and make sure you're the right man before he puts you in that man's hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus is there and say, no, no, I'm going to hang on to it a little while. Yeah, yeah. You, you ain't ready yet. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, you know, it's one thing. She might have got brothers and uncles, but Jesus said, you might want to go look at what I did to that temple, you know, they made me mad. Yeah, yeah. I'd hate to have to put that on you like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. He says, you know, I, I got a few little words for you. My daddy ran pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you what. I'll hang on to all of it just for a little while. Yeah. And maybe when I make this round, you might be ready when I come back around. Yeah. That's right. yeah. That if you're not ready, I'm going to save you again. I just tell you, let me hold on to a little while. Don't get your stuff together. Yeah. We'll make the round again. But when you find that kind of woman, the word of God says, you find a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. It just says, I, you know what I learned looking at that scripture? I should not have jacked up days in my relationship because it doesn't exist. Oh, let me read it again. Let me read it again. Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good day. It don't say nothing about evil. It says you start producing good things. Ain't that right, Miss Yolanda? Good thing. Ain't that right? I, 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 guess what? I, I'm 200 miles away from home. God, you got some good things. You got some wheels? Mama got some wheels? But mama's good things became your good things. Your, your husband agreed with that, right? Produces good things. And when it produces good things, it produces good things for your children. You know something about that, don't you? You got one of the vehicles too at one time, didn't you? Oh, good things. Good things. Good things. So you make sure you your kid keep all y'all vehicles got kids, you gotta give them vehicles. You gotta give them some good things. Oh, Jim, talking about man, no, we ain't giving them our money. Good things.
the right man, the right woman, produces good things. Right woman, wrong man produces good and evil things. Here's why. One's good, the other's evil. So what happens is everything good that goes forth, evil comes to counteract what's good. But when both is headed in the same direction, it only produces good things. I sure want to get to that. I came, but I'd be at 1215. Let me stop right there, eat some breakfast. <laughs> See how I'm turning.